when it comes to bait cannons, bigger is better. But what if you don't have unlimited space to store and transport these things? I'm gonna show you how to build a miniature bait cannon. Here's the question that everybody wants to know the answer to. Easy to store and transport, takes up minimal room in your car going to the beach, and this helps you appreciate the size difference. It packs a wallop of a punch, cast twice as far as I can do by hand. Here we go. So the basic premise is to pack as big a punch as we can into as small a bait cannon as we can, make this thing easier to transport back and forth. Here I've shrunk the air cylinder down as much as I can to about 16 inches long. The 4 inch diameter plus all the connector pieces that are also going to hold pressurized air should give me enough of a punch to get the bait out there a good ways. The only things I had to cut were the air cylinder on either end to cut that down to 16 inches, a 2 inch by 4 inch connector piece and a 1.5 by 4 inch connector piece and that is it. The rest of this assembly is really just priming and gluing the pieces together. I can probably go from no bait cannon to mini bait cannon in under 15 minutes. Let's see if I can do it. About the only other piece of assembly that I need to do is bore a hole into this four inch end cap and install our metal air valve. I'm gonna use a 13 30 seconds inch drill bit and our PVC cement. Pretty good there. One thing to keep in mind as you're doing this, as you apply your PVC primer and PVC cement, don't allow your PVC primer to dry before applying your cement and gluing your pieces together. I'm gonna go ahead and put some primer on this piece. As we press these two pieces together, I'm gonna put it into place and then twist it just to make sure I've got a really good seal in there. Now I've turned that at least 90 degrees, should be good to go. Ooh, boy, that'll be a good one. Beautiful, let all that dry inside there. Now our two inch by four inch piece. Here's the question that everybody wants to know the answer to. Am I actually going to assemble one of these without spilling any of this on my patio? Not likely. It's possible. There's like an ectoplasm stain on my patio right now that will not come out. <clears throat> oh, I did it anyway. Grab my paper towel real quick. One more public service announcement. Make absolutely sure that you're using pressurized PVC to do this. I recommend Schedule 80. It's hard to get right now. I'm using Schedule 40. Make sure that you're not using DWV. It's just not strong enough and you don't want to be picking PVC out of your teeth. Don't put PVC cement on the female side of this valve going to keep it from getting gunked up and messing up the operation of that mechanism. Trust me, these PVC ball valves are hard enough to turn as it is without you adding additional sort of encumbrance in there for them, to, for them to work against as you try to release that trigger. If you can't release the trigger quickly enough, you're going to lose air and lose distance. That's it. Mini bait cannon. Just that quick. I don't know how many minutes that was. That might have been like six or eight minutes after you have to tell me. All right, so I slapped a coat of paint on it. What do you guys think? I think it's looking pretty mean. The last thing I want to do before we go to the beach to test this thing is give you guys some frame of reference so you can appreciate the actual size of the baby cannon. So let me go ahead and just get rid of the barrel. Here is the last bait cannon that we built and this hopefully helps you appreciate the size difference between this bait cannon and then the mini cannon. And you can see already how much easier this is just going to fit in your car, toss it in there, you'll never even know it was there versus that. You kind of have to plan around that. Like you might not even be able to take your luggage to the beach, but you're going to have like the best bait cannon on the beach. I don't know if we've shrunk this thing down too much. I'm really nervous that it's not going to be effective because I've made it too small. Let's go. All right, baby, I'm excited. It is finally here. Field test day. Might even do some fishing. Let's roll. Oh my God. Oh Lord, this is surprising. I was not expecting that much weight. All right, so I am so excited. We've been waiting and waiting to test this thing and I'm finally at the beach. We got our good friends, Ryan and Emily and Spencer from The Way We Hunt, amazing channel. Make sure you check them out. They built a much bigger bait cannon that they're out here to test today. So we're gonna show you guys that one as well and kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll put a link to their video in the description. I don't know who's gonna post first, but I'll definitely give you guys a look at that one as soon as it's ready to go. So we're gonna get the rig all set up, start shooting these things off. If you've seen me do these videos before, we like to use these Hatteras Heavers. These are 12 foot surf rods. 
that you would use if you wanted to cast that thing out as far as you can by hand. I like to use them for this purpose, not for necessarily the length of the rod, but because they have these huge eyelets on them. And what we're after here is trying to put minimal drag on the line as it comes streaming off the reel. Hopefully, that's gonna help us get the maximum distance out of the bait can. We got construction going on. I know, bro, bro, it ain't that windy, bro. He knows you can't build a beach house actually on the beach, right? How you doing there? I am, you know, doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, I'm sorry, did you wanna? It helps if you expand the rib cage. This is where it really helps to have good friends because this is absolutely exhausting when I've done this by myself in the past. I literally have five different pumps at the house right now that we've been testing this week and we come back to a bicycle pump, second bicycle pump that I've been using. All right, let me just explain to you what we use when we fish with these bait cannons. You're gonna see us take a number of these um, bait molds out of the freezer, out of the cooler over here that we've frozen overnight. And what we've got in here are some of these rigs. They're gonna look something like this. This happens to be one of those Walmart rigs and I've just rigged my own snells on the end here with a couple of different size hooks, a three ounce pyramid sinker. We bait that and put it down inside this bait mold, fill it with water, freeze it overnight. That's effectively your projectile, your ice bullet that we're gonna put down the barrel and shoot that out into the surf. Now we just come out here and slide these things out of this tube tie your swivel onto your main line and you're good to go. Now remember, this is the baby cannon and I know it's not gonna shoot as far as one of these bigger bait cannons, certainly not the one that Ryan and Emily just made, but that's okay. What we're testing here is to see if we can get good effective distance out of something that's a lot more portable and easier to take back and forth, baby cannon. Let's see how it works. So this isn't a firearm, but make sure you treat it like it is. These do shoot at a high FPS. So as Ryan's loading this thing, I'm pointing it in a safe direction. Make sure it's not pointed at anybody while you're on the beach. Safety first. Safety first. Last thing I'm gonna tell you as we walk toward the shore, I don't need all this barrel on this mini cannon because there's not that much pressurized air in this air cylinder. I'm gonna shoot this thing with this close to five foot barrel on here, but I really could get away with one that's three and a half or four feet long. I'll show you guys the calculations for how I came up with that. Here. All right, I'm gonna bring in Emily here because I need an assist. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna bring in Ryan here to hold the rod. All right, let's see how we do. For those scoring at home, I did pump this up to 150 PSI. Just give myself a little bit of help. Ready? Three, two, one. Now that's not bad. That one that's pretty good. I'm telling you, I'm pleased with that. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. All right, now, something we've not done before, I had this line counter up here tucked out of the way, and we're gonna spin this thing down into place and count how much line comes back into the reel so I know how far this thing actually went. And we're facing a headwind out here, but I'm confident we got a good result there. All right, so here we go. We're gonna put the line counter down here into place and see what we got. I don't know what we consider success. If I got, honestly, any anything more than 100, 115 yards out of this, I would be just tickled pink. I'd be really happy. All right, so I've got 380.9, about 125 yards with the baby cannon. Not a bad result at all. A lot of fun. At this point, it was time to get out Ryan and Emily's considerably larger bait cannon and give that a shot. I was all too happy to volunteer for the first shift on that air pump. All right, I made it to 20. Shift change. One. So we had some things go wrong there. <laughs> it's a surfer oh, out there. No. We'll have to walk down a little bit. Little does he know. Don't worry, he'll move. One. Explosives! <laughs> Next. All right, now, just for the sake of comparison, kind of have a baseline in the same conditions out here at the beach, same wind and everything else. I'm going to cast one of these by hand using the same rig, same weight and all that and just see what I can do. Now, I'm by no means a world champion to using these Hatteras heavers, but I just want to have something to compare these bait cannon results to. Let's see how we did. I feel a competition coming. 196.8. We definitely got a lot more out of the bait cannon, a lot more out of even the baby bait cannon. It's a step up and a lot less effort. All right, let's talk results. You're probably not gonna believe this, but the mini cannon compared to the bigger cannon was about a wash. But if I'm being honest, I cheated. I shot the mini cannon at 150 PSI, the bigger cannon at 120 PSI. In a fair fight, I know the bigger cannon's gonna win, but that doesn't matter. This wasn't about who could shoot the furthest. We were testing to see if we could get good effective distance out of a compact package. 
and boy did we ever. Now how did it compare to me casting by hand? The mini cannon still went twice as far as me casting by hand with a lot less effort especially when I had good friends helping me pump the thing up. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope you found it informative. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss a ton of great content on this channel. Make sure you check out The Way We Hunt. Great people, great content as well. Give them a look and a subscribe. We'll see you next time. God bless. Good luck on the shore.